Ah, what a whirlwind of excitement within the People's Liberation Army right now. They've been playing musical chairs with their top brass, firing more than 15 of their top generals within the span of just six months. This represents the largest purge in recent history, and it included leadership in their most prized branch, the Rocket Force. These actions have largely been attributed to combating corruption within the PLA. One article in Bloomberg even claimed US intelligence believed corruption was so bad in China that their missiles are literally filled with water instead of fuel. But hold your horses, folks. Before we jump to conclusions, the credibility of that article has been called into question for a few reasons that we'll get into in this video. Either way, this raises important questions about the extent of the corruption issue within the PLA. It's also the perfect opportunity for us to learn about how the ethics and cultural understanding of corruption in China works very differently than it does here in the West. But first, when I was in boot camp at Fort Benning, my drill sergeant would yell at me and smoke me for having a five o'clock shadow. I wish I had Henson shaving back then because their razor gave me the closest shave I've ever had with zero irritation on my skin. If you're cursed with hairiness like me, you need a close shave so you don't have peach fuzz growing on your face within three hours. Born out of an aerospace company in 2020, Henson harnessed their expertise to develop a razor system that supports the blade right up to the edge, eliminating blade chatter, which is a primary source of razor burn. The blade is only exposed about one thousandth of an inch. That's less than the thickness of a human hair. Instead of using those expensive multi-blade cartridges that are full of plastic and give you razor burn, grab Henson's AL-13, an aircraft aluminum. Its surgically engineered razor takes just one old school razor blade. You remember those? And instead of throwing away two, three, four dollars on each cartridge, razor blades just cost 10 cents a piece here. I'm no NASA engineer, but that seems cheaper and more efficient to me. And if 10 cents is too expensive for you, Henson is offering 100 free blades with the purchase of a razor. Just use code TASK at checkout. Starting in July 2023, a sweeping campaign targeted Chinese generals, particularly within the PLA rocket force, in what amounted to a purge. This probably wouldn't have been such a big deal if a couple of infantry generals that we were talking about here, but we're talking about one of the most important parts of the PLA that oversees their tactical and nuclear missiles. This branch has seen some of the biggest increases in funding and modernization in recent years. Its job is considered one of the most important to Chinese military strategy from their perspective. It helps to deter US warships in the South China Sea. It's hard for me to impress upon you just how key the rocket force really is to China's future plans. The rocket force and its silos are located throughout the entire country, not just one theater command. And we'll see with great purge, comes great consequences, because the firings have temporarily weakened the PLA, but unlike the purge in 2015, which was believed to have been aimed at eliminating political opponents, the current purge here in 2023 is thought to be primarily focused on combating corruption. And what are we inferring this from? Well, partly because on January 6th, Bloomberg published a report stating that anonymous US assessments claimed the missiles of the rocket force were filled with water instead of fuel. Additionally, the report mentioned the presence of malfunctioning missile silos than their lids in Western China, which could potentially hinder effective missile launches. However, from a technical standpoint, it's highly improbable for a missile to be filled with water. It's important to note that only one type of missile in the rocket force inventory, the DF-5, is liquid fuel. Normally, liquid fuel is loaded into the missile shortly before launch, making it unlikely that water would be present inside the missile itself. It is plausible that the water was found in the fuel tank designated for the DF-5 missile, and some officers might have stolen the fuel for illicit purposes. Furthermore, experts on China have since called into question whether this might come down to a mistranslation between English and Chinese. There are phrases or idioms in China whose meaning can easily be mistranslated. In this case, there's a theory that the term for watered down, or it might have been idiom for inflating or padding, which was misinterpreted to mean the missiles were literally filled with water. It's tough to get confirmation since the source of this intelligence was anonymous. If you want to understand just how little we understand about what's happening in 
inside China's politics and military, we need only look at how little they understand about what's happening in the United States. A disinformation campaign in China has many of them convinced that Texas has officially declared a civil war and broken off from the United States. If that ever does happen, it certainly hasn't happened yet. I bring this up to illustrate how, in some cases, what China perceives about US internal institutions is far from the truth, and it's likely the same that for some of our perceptions of Chinese institutions. It turns out, understanding each other's political dramas is about as easy as speed running Cuphead. Evidence comes from the fact that there are multiple different theories about what's happening in China right now, including that the firings might be Xi Jinping trying to put in place new generals who are willing to go to war. US presidents themselves have a history of firing high profile generals if they don't agree on some key issues. Famously, General MacArthur was fired by Harry Truman. President Obama removed General McChrystal after he spoke ill of him to the media. Officers in the United States are fired at a surprisingly routine frequency. Just a cursory look revealed dozens in the past year alone. However, the US is by no means systematically replacing 15 of their top generals at the same time. Let's make no mistake. But there were additional claims of corruption in the PLA. For example, Radio Free Asia reported that a former PLA officer claimed Chinese Air Force personnel had used fuel to cook and prepare hot pot. I mean, come on, that's rookie levels of corruption. When I was in Iraq, we used JP-8 diesel fuel to burn our waste garbage, and I'm sure I ate a JP-8 fuel heated hot dog or two. The China Aerospace University is a subsidiary of the US Air Force University. They're one of the most credible resources on studying China's military that I've found over there in the past few years. In October 2022, they published a comprehensive Chinese rocket force report spanning 255 pages. The report provided detailed information on the organizational structure of the rocket force, the identities of commanders and senior leaders, as well as sensitive data such as the location and coordinates of specific troop levels and the types of deployed missiles. So basically the US military was able to acquire really high level intelligence and it suggests that it was potentially a leakage of Chinese military secrets from within the upper echelons of the rocket force. This in turn may have contributed to the decision to investigate the rocket force further. In July 2023, for example, Wu Ganghu, a former deputy commander of the rocket force, passed away. The official obituary attributed the death to cerebral hemorrhage. However, Wu's former superior, Xiao Yang, posted on social media claiming that Wu had chosen to end his time on Earth himself, if you know what I mean. He might have seen the writing on the wall and checked out early instead of having to face the CCP authorities. This revelation generated concerns and speculation about the state of affairs within the rocket force, which needed clarification from the CCP themselves. That same month, the Equipment Development Department of the Central Military Commission made a public announcement seeking information regarding illegal procurement and bidding of military equipment dating back to October 2017. This marked the initiation of these corruption investigations. Two days later, reports emerged stating that Rocket Force Commander Li Yaochao, Deputy Commander Gao Abin, and former Deputy Commander Zhen Zhang had been arrested and were currently under investigation. So in July, Xi Jinping announced the appointment of Wang Ho Bin as the new rocket force commander. He's 63 years old and he's been in the service since 1979. So he's, a, he's an old hand. Then Xi Xiong was made the political commissar. Uh, political commissars are unique to the Chinese military and are basically a high ranking officer whose primary responsibility is to ensure the ideological loyalty and political reliability of military personnel. Could you imagine if you had a captain walking around quizzing you on how much you love Joe Biden or George Bush throughout your career. Yeah, that, that's an oversimplification, but that's essentially what a political commissar is. It's not too far off from it anyway. All right, Spare Parts Army, it's time to grab your popcorn, sit back and enjoy the show because it's time to watch China's corruption on full display here. So picture this, Wang Hu Bin previously served as the deputy commander of the Navy and Xi Xing, formerly the deputy political commissar of the Southern Theater Command and political commissar of the Theater Air Force, were both transferred to the rocket force simultaneously Yao Chu and Zhang Bu were dismissed from their positions. The decision to appoint generals from different military branches to lead the rocket force signifies a lack of trust in individuals originating solely from the rocket force. In October 2023, China removed former defense minister Li Shang Fu from his position. Li had been absent from public view since August and reports indicated that he was being investigated for corruption. Li had headed the departments from 2017 to 2022. Why does any of this matter when the bullets start flying? because corruption 
hurts unit cohesion. I'm always reminded of that quote from Band of Brothers when Lieutenant Winters is unhappy when he sees Buck Compton gambling on cards with his enlisted troops. He says, never put yourself in a position where you can take from these men. This is a truism in the military. In a well-functioning unit, there's a sense of leadership ethics. This quote emphasizes the importance of avoiding situations where you can exploit or take advantage of your subordinates, even if it's just a seemingly harmless activity like gambling. If you feel like your leadership is taking advantage of their position of power to gain money and bribing their way to the top, how much respect for them would you have? And personally, I'd be less likely to lay down my life or follow an order that a corrupt officer gave me. Furthermore, on December 27th, the CCP National Committee dismissed Wu Yangxing, the chairman of the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, Lu Xingxiang, the chairman of the Norinco Group, and Wang Changpi, the deputy general manager of China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, as members of the 14th CPCC National Committee. Boom, clearance revoked. Do not pass go, do not collect 200 yuan. It would kind of be like if uh, we fired the heads of Raytheon and Lockheed Martin and a bunch of defense contractors, which believe Believe it or not, that kind of thing has happened in the United States in the past during the 1970s and 80s when the defense industry in the US faced a number of lawsuits having to do with corruption. Then, in December 9th, individuals were removed who were representatives of the National People's Congress from various departments, including the Joint Staff Department of the Central Military Commission. The simultaneous dismissal of these nine generals from their positions as NPC deputies by the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress is an uncommon occurrence. The majority of these dismissed PLA representatives held technical officer roles and were concentrated within the rocket force and the equipment procurement system. This concentration suggests that significant events or issues of great magnitude have taken place within these two systems. Something we have to understand here is that China has a long history of bureaucratic systems where officials held significant power and authority. Throughout history, corruption has been a reoccurring problem with instances of bribery, nepotism, and and embezzlement. The legacy of this history and this context has influenced modern perceptions and practices regarding corruption in China. It's even ingrained in their culture to some degree. With the concept of Guangxi, which means personal relationships and networks play a traditionally important role in Chinese society. Personal connections are often prioritized over meritocracy, merit. That sounds a lot like the Nepo babies we have here in the US. When Deng Xiaoping initiated economic reforms in the late 1970s, the military had already become an integral part of China's economic landscape. In addition to its farms and various industrial activities, the military in China controlled an extensive defense production industrial complex that had some of the nation's best technical capabilities. Even within civilian enterprises, major airports and numerous other sectors fell under military control and administration. China's railways, for instance, had to prioritize the military's orders. Consequently, during the early 1980s, the number of PLA troops reached a peak of about 4.1 million people. There were thousands of registered business firms associated with the military. This bureaucratic system, where it's the government's money, not yours on the line, is primed for corruption. Moreover, the military enjoyed a favorable position for smuggling activities because neither the police nor customs had the right to inspect military vehicles suspected of carrying illicit goods. According to this research publication titled The Chinese Military and Its Business Operations, the PLA as an Entrepreneur by Thomas J. Bickford, the annual revenue generated by PLA-run businesses in 1997 exceeded 18 billion bucks, with exports alone contributing 7 billion to foreign exchange earnings. We know there's an apparent economic slowdown in China right now. So what that means is these various government agencies involved in business ventures are unlikely to receive sufficient funding. This thereby prompts them to seek loopholes to keep their money. This challenge becomes even bigger due to repeated allegations of involvement by high-ranking leaders. There are accusations of top officials and their relatives engaged in smuggling. It's widely known that coveted positions within the PLA are often controlled by the offspring, the children of influential party leaders. Dang's son-in-law, for instance, exerts influence over major PLA-run business corporations. Every government and military is plagued by misuse of funds. It's not always the best military that wins wars. It's usually the least worst. So the question isn't whether or not there's corruption in the CCP, but uh, just how bad is it? How much of it is by design? How much of it is a feature, not a bug? Despite the implementation of numerous anti-smuggling measures, 
China's prosecutors had to handle over 100,000 corruption cases in 1998 alone. The PLA failure to effectively address this negative publicity and growing criticism from the party leadership ultimately made it the target of President Zhang's anti-graft campaign. In a surprising move, President Zhang Zhumen announced in early 1998 that the army and armed police are hereby ordered to cease all business activities. Initially, many officials and commentators dismissed this announcement, believing it wouldn't be seriously pursued by the party leadership. But in October 1998, in a large meeting attended by the Central Committee, the State Council, and the Central Military Commission was held to address the issue. During their talks, President Zhang's policy directive was finally endorsed. The armed forces and police were urged to fully comply with national policy and adhere to the deadline by December 15th, 1998. Plans were also formulated for the takeover of PLA-run businesses. So at one point, Chinese military ran actual businesses. So you could see how ingrained this thinking is in what they're in their recent history. And and state media reported that this transition was successfully completed within the design time framework. You might be surprised to learn there was an alleged conspiracy plot orchestrated by Zhu Chao and Gao Bangjiang to overthrow Xi Jinping through a coup. Zhu Chao held the position of vice chairman of the Central Military Commission, the highest military council in China. As one of the top ranking officers in the People's Liberation Army, he also served on the 25 member Politburo of the Chinese Communist Party from 2007 to 2012. Meanwhile, his compatriot Gao Bangjiang held the position in the Political Bureau Bureau of the Chinese Communist Party, the highest decision-making body in China. It's also worth noting that Zhu and Gao, as the highest ranking military officials in the PLA after the president, held significant influence within the armed forces, which means they could potentially have pulled off a coup. They faced accusations of colluding in a plot against Xi Jinping. Bo was considered Xi Jinping's main political rival prior to Xi ascending as the paramount leader of China. Gao was expelled from the Communist Party in 2015 and he was sentenced to life imprisonment for bribery. Zhu was undergoing legal proceedings and facing a court martial, but they dropped the charges against him following his death from bladder cancer. Everyone keeps dying before we have a chance to throw them in prison. There's widespread belief that Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign was used as a pretext to eliminate political opponents. Now, that's not what's happening here with the rocket force, but it could be something different. He's not afraid the rocket force is gonna coup him, but maybe he's worried that those in charge of the rocket force aren't ready to go to war. Multiple reports from Chinese and international media revealed that the practice of exchanging cash for ranks was widespread within the PLA. This practice allegedly extended from high-ranking officers to lower-ranking petty officers. We don't have this system of exchanging cash for rank in the US military. We reserve that for getting our kids into college. One notable example involved an officer attempting to bribe Zhu with 10 million yuan for a higher rank, only to be surpassed by another officer who offered 20 million, leading Zhu to nullify the arrangement with the first officer. Sorry, you didn't pay enough for that rank. There's a lot of justified criticism out there about the US military, but from what I saw, it was not this kind of corruption inside the ranks. And personally, I believe my leadership was there thanks to merit that they'd earned. On June 30th, 2014, Zhu was expelled from the Chinese Communist Party. State media described his crimes as an abuse of power. Zhu's downfall came as a surprise because corruption investigations involving mid-tier military officers are rarely publicly disclosed in order to safeguard national security. The announcement of a high-ranking general's involvement was unprecedented. Zhu became the most senior officer in the history of the People's Liberation Army to be investigated for corruption. This would be like if the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the US military was sent to prison for corruption. It would be earth-shattering news here. In October 2014, Zhu reportedly confessed to accepting bribes, becoming a prominent figure in Xi Jinping's anti-corruption drive. In addition to its impact on the Chinese military's capabilities and bolstering Xi's control over arms trade, the sudden removal of top military commanders could have adverse effect on morale within the Chinese military and present unforeseen challenges to Xi Jinping's authority over the armed forces. Given the Chinese military's limited experience in actual combat and its relatively constrained joint warfare capabilities, the escalating internal turbulence may pose heightened risk to the overall functioning of the Chinese military. While it is conceivable that fuel may have been used for cooking and that silo lids could malfunction, it's essential to approach these claims with caution and skepticism, a healthy dose of it. The reason it's important to be critical and thoroughly investigate the veracity of these claims beforehand and before drawing definitive conclusions is because we might make the wrong policy if we assume 
that China is just a paper tiger. If you want to dive deeper into this, I strongly recommend checking out Perun's outstanding video on Chinese corruption and the channel Sandbox. They also did a great job covering this topic. Links in the description. The PLA Rocket Force represents a threat to the United States, particularly due to its possession of advanced weapons as well as anti-ship ballistic missiles, which form the backbone of China's anti-access area denial strategy. While the recent scandals may raise questions about the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force true capabilities, it's crucial for us to never underestimate our adversary. We should remain vigilant despite any perceived weaknesses that may emerge from these scandals. Hey Spare Parts Army, if you made it this far in the video, I figured you might be interested in some of the new merch that we just dropped. We have a shirt to help you pronounce the word nuclear correctly. There's a lot of buzzwords in the military industrial complex, and you want the best buzzword out there. Here's lethality. If you already have a ton of those high speed special forces shirts, why don't you get yourself an average infantryman one? Or you can get an unlimited prescription for JDAMs to take out that pesky enemy itch.